Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we are gonna paint the Loch Ness Monster herself. Now, I apologize in advance. We had a snowstorm that kept threatening to hit, so there are a couple lighting issues at the beginning, but it's resolved pretty quickly, and it doesn't last throughout the entire video. Someday, maybe I'll make it to 100% professionalism for you. Now, before this video was even released, I did hear a few people say that they felt like this was probably above their skill level, but I encourage you to try. If it's something that you like and something you feel like you want to do, whether you feel like you are ready for it or not, there's no harm in trying, and you might learn something. Now, if you've been painting with me for a little while, particularly through September when we did the paint bucket, and then even a little bit before that when we did the chair against the textured wall, then you have the skills necessary to do this painting. We're just gonna spend a little bit more time and get into a bit more detail with the shadows, highlights, and layers, but the techniques are all exactly the same. Now, before we get started, make sure that you check out the video description below for a list of all of the materials that you'll need for today's painting, as well as the tracing element for Nessie, which you can download for free off of my website. Now let's get started. For today's painting, I am starting with my pretty standard 12 by 16, fresh out of the package, no additional gesso. I didn't wet the back. You could if you wanted to. The reason I didn't is because I'm gonna be using matte medium to help me blend. So if you don't wanna use matte medium, if you don't have it, just wet the back of your canvas and I think that'll help you out a little bit. Before we start, I want to actually map out where everything is gonna go on my painting. So I like to start with my moon. So I'm just gonna come up here with my pencil and just kind of draw a little bit of, well, let's move it over a little bit, a little bit of a circle. Don't draw it on there too dark because it may affect your paint or it may show through when we're done. And then I'm gonna sketch in some just loose mountains. Just very generally. And I can change all of this as I start filling it in. Then I wanna do the distant horizon. And my distant horizon is gonna be probably just a little bit higher than the one third mark. So remember the rule of thirds, you can split your canvas into three distinct areas this way that are very equal and this way as well. So I'm gonna have my horizon be, let's see, I think that's about my one third mark, just a little bit higher than that. And so I'm just gonna loosely sketch that in there. I just wanna make sure it's relatively flat. Now let's do our little bit of land that's gonna have our castle. So one way not to make your land look flat is to pull it out a little lower than the horizon. So see how my horizon goes back here? And my land is gonna kinda of start there, come up a bit above the horizon. And I'm just gonna kinda of sketch it about like that. Now we, before we go any further, we wanna make sure that we have room for our Loch Ness Monster. So I have her printed out here and I'm gonna use this to trace. So I'm gonna put my finger on the back so I know exactly where her tail ends. And kinda of hold her where I think I want her to be. I have the bottom of her tail about a half an inch above the bottom of the canvas. And I just wanna make sure that this piece of land doesn't come down beyond her nose because otherwise her head is gonna be out of the water. And if you want her head out of the water, that's perfectly fine as well. So I think my land is about right because I want her just coming up to the water. So I've decided that is placed appropriately. So I'm gonna sketch on my castle. Now this castle is, it's just kind of based from memory on the castle at Loch Ness. And I, I don't know, I'm probably pronouncing it totally wrong, but I think it's pronounced Urquhart, Castle Urquhart. Anybody in Scotland, if I just totally brutalized the name of this castle, let me know in the comments below how it's actually pronounced. I'm just kind of sketching it from memory, so it's not exact, but it's kind of a run-down, broken old castle. Little bits coming off here and there. A little broken chunk here. And I will link I'll put some links in the, in the description below where you can find some images of this castle. And then maybe we've got some other little broken ruinous bits here. Who knows what they look like? 
I think that's pretty good, so now we can get started painting. Now, I didn't sketch Nessie on here yet because if I do, then I'm either gonna lose her completely when I paint the water or I'm gonna end up painting around her. Now, if that's what you wanna do, that's perfectly fine. But I actually want to use the gradient that we're gonna create in the water here for her initial color. So whatever color it ends up being here and the way it fades, that's gonna be the color of her and that's gonna help us create depth in her highlights and shadows. So we'll sketch her on after we have this painted. So now we need to mix up the color for her. So I'm gonna use some phthalo blue and some cad red medium. And I'm only using the heavy body of this because I don't have it in basics. If you have this color in basics, that's fine. I'm gonna use a little bit less than half of the amount that I used of the phthalo blue because I want it to lean a little closer to the phthalo blue side. And then I'm gonna get a palette knife and mix it. Now the reason I am mixing my colors together here, I know you usually don't see me mix my colors on my palette like this before I paint with them, but it's because I'm going for kind of a chromatic black. And when I want kind of a monochromatic scene, it's just easier to mix the color beforehand because if I accidentally get more red in one part, it's gonna kind of push it into a different plane on the painting. It's gonna say it's more in shadow or it just doesn't fit there. You certainly don't have to mix it beforehand, but I just feel like it's easier for a monochromatic painting. You could even just use Mars Black for this if you want, just do a black and white painting. You can mix any two colors that you like. I would just say make sure that before you use them that see in their full saturation how it almost appears black. That's what we're looking for. But then when we lighten it, see it's still got that jewel tone blue to it. But there's not a right or wrong color combination here. Use whatever you want. Remember to squish it so you kind of scrape it until you've scraped it all in and then squish it. And that's how you're gonna get a nice full blend. Kind of scrape it into a single pile over in the corner here. And if you're interested in making a monochromatic black but you want it to look a little different, you can check out the information I card up here. I have a video that I made a while back of a bunch of different formulas for chromatic blacks. And I think any one of them would really work really nicely with this painting. Right now I have some white and that's all the colors I'm gonna use today. Let's go ahead and start in our sky. Now I'm not gonna be worried about painting over these lines that I did. A lot of times just painting in the lines kind of helps solidify to you where you're gonna put elements. So if you paint over them, it doesn't really matter. I'm using my 5 8 inch angle brush and I'm using matte medium here, like I said, just a little bit, but you don't have to if you don't want to. If you're gonna use water, just make sure you wet down your brush instead of pick up the matte medium here. So my moon, I want to be very, very pale, about white, and then I want a little bit of a glow out from that. So I'm gonna come in here and just grab just a tiny bit. I just barely touched into that dark color, and I'm gonna mix it with some white. Get a very pale color. I think that's about good and I'm gonna go around the moon. If you don't have a 5 8 inch angle brush, it's fine. You could use a flat brush or a half inch, whatever. I'm not necessarily trying to keep a smooth, you know, circular shape around here. I'm just kind of going in a circle around the moon to start. Now I'm gonna pick up about the same amount of my dark color as I did the first time and mix it into that first mixture. So it's just a little bit darker. And here we can kind of go back and forth. Remember those lazy X's? And then super light pressure there to dust them together. Let's take a bit of that up here as well. A little bit more of our dark color and mix it in that same spot. That might be just a little too dark. There we go. 
lazy X's outside of that first color. And light pressure to blend them. You know, I think I do want to go just a hint darker there. I feel like that's too light now. Let's do that again. There we go. That's more like what I wanted. And see, I just went over my castle. I can still kind of see the pencil lines through it. Just pick up a little extra white for this spot. I kind of lost control of my moon there. That's all right. Just throw a little extra white in there and it's back. See, so don't, don't freak out. I know that sometimes when you've worked on a blend and all of a sudden something like that happens, that can be distressing, but you can add it back in. You can add anything back in. Let's do that same darker color on the other side. Light pressure there, and if it starts to dry like that, how you can see the, the separation. If you're using matte medium, just pick up a tiny point of it. See in the way it thins the paint down a bit. And you can even pick up just a little bit more white. Sometimes when I talk and paint, I end up painting a little slower than, than is necessary, so my paint dries out. Let's go darker. Take that all the way to the edge there. Dust it in all the way down the side. Now another thing we're kind of doing with this sky here is we're creating a value map for essentially our entire painting. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Let's go even darker. See, there's always some white in there. I'm never using this color on its own. Okay, I've got my number eight filbert and I'd wet it in the jar. I don't need matte medium here. I'm getting some white, and there's a tiny hint of blue in that area, but it's mostly just white. And I'm going to come in here and just kind of add this circle in loosely. Let the shape of the filbert really do all of the work for you. And if you're having a hard time getting your moon to be round, then don't. Dust it out so that it doesn't have a definite shape around the edge. That's perfectly fine. In fact, I might, so I picked up just a teeny point of matte medium, and I'm just going to break up that line so there's not a real sharp edge to the moon here. Okay, I said we were essentially creating a value map up here, and so what I mean by that is, remember, value refers to how dark or how light a color is. So we want to make sure that throughout our painting, to create some harmony in here, that we don't take anything lighter than anything in the sky, which is pure white. So we have a lot of room there. We can use pure white, and we don't really want to take anything darker than what's in the sky. So this is our darkest value here, and it will darken just a little bit more as it dries. So this should be the same color as our darkest shadows. You can probably go just a little bit darker in some areas to really punch those shadows, but overall you don't want any large areas that are much darker than this. And we'll be referring back to this throughout the painting. Now let's go ahead and paint in our mountains. I'm gonna stick with my 5 8 but again, you can use whichever brush you like. And I think I'm gonna go with a base color for my mountains that's right about in here. 
So I'm just gonna mix up a color that I feel is pretty close to that. Little hint darker. Let's go a little bit darker. And kind of fill in our dark areas of our mountain. Now remember where your moon is and where your light source is coming from. Because you wanna make sure that you're highlighting and low lighting in accordance with that. And I know right now it doesn't look like I am. But these are just the base colors. And just get rid of some of those lines. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go lighter. Probably a value right about in here, getting really close to the moon. And we can start adding in our highlights. I'm gonna kind of cut my mountain down right there and see there's a little bit of a, a ridge. Just lightly streak it down. Since that dark paint I put there is still wet, it's pretty much blending. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on these mountains because they're in the distance and they're not our focus. Let's add a bit of that up here as well. And then you can keep playing with these shadows and highlights, you know, make certain things brighter and darker. And if you wanted to get a little more detailed, you could. I'm really just gonna mess with the shadows and highlights until I like the colors, and that's really all I'm gonna do to these mountains. Go just a bit darker there. It is facing the moon, but it's the farthest point from it, so you wanna dust it out a little bit. Get my dark color again and just kind of fix up this line here. I'm just using light pressure and so it looks like we have a, a upside and a downside to our mountain. A little point of white. This one's closest to the mountain, so we want to give it a nice highlight right there at the top. I think that's an okay start with our mountains. I can come back later and pop the highlights a little bit more if I feel like I need to. I almost forgot I wanna add some clouds to the sky, so I'm using my number eight again. And I'm gonna get just the tiniest bit of this kind of lighter color. I don't want a lot of it on there, just a hint. And then I'm gonna come in with where the corner would be and just lightly touch into that. So I don't have a ton of paint on here. And I'm gonna use that corner and put it in just right into my moon and kind of squiggle, slightly turning my brush as I go. Just create some really foggy, light clouds. A little bit more. That one got a little darker than I wanted, but that's not a big deal because I can just pick up a little more white and kind of place that right at the top. I do want a little bit of that blue in there, you know, to help indicate shadows in the, in the clouds, but I don't want them too dark. There we go, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. So see that edge just kind of dragging it. And get a tiny point of white and just put it wherever you want, wherever you don't like what happened there. A 
let's do the underpainting on our castle. Now our castle, we're really looking at it from the back and the moon is here shining that way. So the castle's mostly gonna be in shadow to us with a few little points of highlight. So I'm gonna take my darkest value up here and that's what I'm gonna block my castle in with. I'm gonna use my number eight bright. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. So I'm gonna get some of the dark color and mix it in here. Try and match it a bit, remembering that this dried just a hint darker than it looked when it was wet. I think I need just a little bit darker though. It doesn't have to be real precise. You just generally wanna shoot for these kinds of values throughout. That's good. And then I'm just gonna kind of block in where my castle is. And you can do a totally different looking castle if you want, it doesn't have to be the same. Don't worry about the ground here. I'm gonna paint that all in the same color. Don't forget our little ruin bits down in here. They don't have to look like anything in particular, just maybe they're even just rocks. Either way, you wanna get something in there. I'm gonna go back to my 5 8 inch angle for this larger area. And I'm gonna fill in the ground use the point of it. Don't get real specific here because when we paint in the water, you're gonna lose a lot of this anyway. We just wanna remind ourselves where the ground is and about how far out into the water it comes. All right, now we can start on our water. So I'm gonna start at the bottom with my darkest value, which is gonna be you know, similar to these values. And this did end up a little bit darker than this, but I'm gonna add some highlights to part of the ground and the castle anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. So I'm gonna go for a color down here that's pretty close to those. I'm gonna use my one inch flat brush and I wet it in my jar a little bit and then kind of wiped it on a paper towel. Because again, I am gonna use a little bit of matte medium. So I'm gonna load up with a good amount of my dark color. And pull a bit of white into it and loosely mix it just to make sure I'm on the right track. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna start at the bottom here and with those short back and forth strokes, little X's Remember to keep your brush strokes pretty controlled into one area and don't move on until that area is filled in. I'm gonna break up my line there. I don't want a hard line because that'll make it hard to transition into the next color. Now again, even though we're painting the underwater section, you wanna pay attention to your light source. So my moon is here, it's kind of shining this way I've got a castle and a piece of land here and I feel like it would make it a little bit darker under here. So I'm gonna take this dark color up a little higher on this side than I do on the other side. I'll take it about up to there. Break up that line and then lightly just smooth out any brush stroke marks. And I am gonna take this all the way across the bottom to the other side. I'll bring it up a bit on this side, but not as far as I did over here. Let's go a little bit lighter. 
Just pull a bit more white into that mixture. A little more matte medium or water, whatever you're using. I'm gonna start right above that last color and then lighten my pressure as I get into it. See, effortless, nice smooth blend. Heavy pressure to lay that paint down up on your brush's tippy toe to smooth them. This is really the same blending principle as in the tropical sunset that we did. You know, where I showed you the two different ways that you can blend a background. This is the exact same thing. It's just our brush stroke is going in a different direction. Let's go ahead and take this color all the way up, right up to our, our land. I'm not worried if I cut into it. And this dark color did dry, so I didn't get a good blend there. I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit more of my dark, a little bit more matte medium, and light pressure. And there, it's blended nicely. Let's go even lighter. I'm just pulling white into that mixture now. No additional blue. And quite a bit lighter still. We're getting toward the surface of the water now. Now, everything from this piece of land up is gonna be the surface of our water. So I'm gonna start going back and forth. And super light pressure there because I don't want a real definite line. You know, I don't want my brush strokes going like this and then all of a sudden these hard ones cutting across like that. So I am just using the tip of my brush, but to blend it, see my brush isn't bending. You can just barely feel it moving across the surface of the paint there. Picked up a little more white. Heavy pressure to lay it on. Light pressure to blend them together. I may go to my half inch for the back there. Actually, I'm just gonna use my 5 8 again. A little bit of a lighter color. Get my horizon back in there. Take it all the way back behind that piece of land. And blend it in. Now, the thing is, I don't want that bright color of water right up against my land there, and I don't really want it that bright over there. So I'm gonna pull a bit more of my dark in. Kind of a value right about in here. And I'm gonna lightly streak that in. See, I'm just using the edge of my brush and light pressure. Just kind of adding some shadow into there. There we go. Kind of like the color that came all the way up here. That's about what I'm looking for at the, on the surface of the water at the base of the mountain or the land. Just get a hint of it out in there. If our water's moving on the surface, there's gonna be some reflection. Maybe a little reflection of this mountain.
using pretty light pressure. Let's get some of that down here a bit. I feel like that's looking pretty good. Some little breaks of a slightly darker color right in there. This part of the water would be very dark. Let's go lighter. We'll start working on the middle of the water. Still using my 5 8 inch. I'm going to start right back in here with short brush strokes. Very light pressure. Overlap. I'm overlapping that darker color that I just put. And if that color is still wet, that'll be good because then it'll streak a little bit. As I get forward more, I can start putting a little bit heavier pressure on my brush because remember in the distance things get smaller so the ripples back here would be quite small. And then as they get forward, they might be a little bit larger. Take it into there a little bit, don't be afraid. The one thing I don't want you to do is create a hard line, this white stripe like that. And everything on the other side is dark and everything on the other side is dark. This bright white stripe. See how this kind of folds what you're looking for here is, so we've got our dark color here, we've got our light color here. You want them to kind of fold together and overlap just a little bit. You don't want this. That's going to look really unnatural. See, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on my brush. Let me show you. So I'm not making just a, a straight line like that. In the distance, yes but then they all kind of overlap a little bit, kind of like that. As we get closer, I am gonna put just a little bit more pressure on my brush and see how they kind of ripple together. Don't do this. Don't do that. And we're gonna build these layers in our water slowly. I'm gonna bring that down on this side, just a hint below where the water stopped, and you can't really see it, but you'll be able to see it more in a minute. Now I feel like this is too dark for me to take this light color into here. You can see it way too strongly. So I am gonna to go to a very slightly darker color. That's a little bit kind of halfway between this color and this color. And that's what I'm gonna go into here with. Pull it into that lighter color, don't be afraid. Do not stop where you see that lighter color starting. See, I pulled that almost all, all the way out into the area that's gonna be very bright. I washed off my brush just to get that dark color off of there. Picking this color back up. Now we can kind of work on, there we go. See now those colors fold together. Some of that dark still shows a bit. Super light pressure, I'm gonna take some of this lighter color into there. Just a little bit. I think it's really important that you don't tighten up while you're doing this part. When we tighten up while we're doing this, we get very distinct lines and that's not what we want. And I know I have a little bit of that going on in here, but I'm not done. I really like how smooth this is, but there's still very definite color differences. See, I've got bright against dark, bright against dark. 
and that's really what we're looking for. I'm going to go back to my number eight bright to start working on the lightest areas. And I'm going to a smaller brush because I want to be able to control this lighter paint a little bit more. So I got some matte medium, some white. I'm just going to loosely mix them together there. And I'm only going to be using the tip of my filbert. I'm going to come right back into here into the distance and I'm just barely touching, kind of scribbling side to side a little bit. See, I'm almost like zigzagging it. And you can start a little at a time. You know when you start adding the white, it can be it can be a little intimidating. You think, oh, don't add too much, but you want to add quite a bit, but go ahead and start with just a little bit. You can build it up. So everything behind this piece of land is quite bright, so I'm making sure to get a good amount of that white back there. And I'm going to start dragging it out here, slightly longer and wider brush strokes. See how I kind of scribbled it that way, zagged it back that way, back that way. And then let it trail off there into the darker area. And again, I'm just going to start somewhere. Pull a bit of that down into here. Like I said, I don't want a real definite start and stop between the surface and underwater. So that's why I'm leaving that kind of loose. So that's the beginning of our bright highlights. I'm going to take just a few more into this darker area. All right, now let's not be afraid, let's get more white. Remember in our value map in the sky, we have pure white. This is white, but because it's thin, transparent, kind of scrubbed on, it's not pure white. It's not as bright as the moon. We wanna make sure that the surface of our water has areas that are as bright as the moon, because the water is very, very reflective. So again, with the heavier white, I'm starting back here in the distance. See, I'm really filling in that center quite heavily with white, but it's still broken and it still extends into some of the other areas. I think I'm almost happy with this. I may touch it up a little bit later, but for the most part, I feel like the surface of the water looks about like I want it to. All right, while our water dries, we wanna make sure this is dry before we trace Nessie on it. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the castle and the rocks here. Now, when you're highlighting this, Remember your light source. So this castle is placed directly between us and the moon. So really, we're not gonna see a lot of highlights on it. If there's a flat face here that kind of faces off this way, we might see some highlight here. But this part is facing directly away from the moon. There's not gonna be any highlight here. We might have a little bit of reflected glow coming off of the water, but we'll have some highlights on some of these top edges. And for sure, on this edge, and our rocks down through here. So I'm gonna use my number eight bright, and I'm gonna pick up this bluish color that we've been using. So this is the value, uh, yeah, we can start right about there, right about in that area. 
And I'm going to use this pretty dry, pretty much going to dry brush some of these highlights on there. I'm going to start right at the edge here. And I'm going to pull this over because I'm going to say that this side is flat facing that direction. So we do have a little bit of a highlight on it. What is going on with my brush there? Had a little extra water on it that I didn't want. Okay, so that's a flat spot. And we'll say this is a flat spot. And pull that over. I know that looks super weird and you're like, what? You're highlighting it on the wrong side. But I promise we're gonna make that look like a, a wall facing the left of our canvas. Just kind of loosely brush that in there. I'm gonna give a little bit of a highlight up here on this top edge. And some down here, up this piece, just on the edge of it, but not on these right hand edges, because that's facing away from the moon. A little bit right here, and up on the top, maybe just a speck right there. Now to make that look like a wall that's facing this way, we're gonna put a little bit of a highlight across the top of it. Let's say there's kind of like a little crushed corner here and the top edge of the back wall that's facing us. This has just a hint of a highlight on it. We'll say it kind of tapers off right about there. So there we've started highlighting our castle and now it's starting to look like a castle and not just a weird flat shape. I'm going to stick with that same color and we'll generally add some highlights across the top of these little ruined bits. So here I just kind of used my brush horizontally and just kind of pulled it slightly diagonally, just to say that's a flat spot. Kind of doing that all through here because it's like some rocks and stuff pointing into the water. Now, one other thing, remember, if our moon is this way and the light is hitting the castle this way, however our finger goes like that, see where my thumb is? That's what's gonna be in highlight, and really, everything behind it isn't. So I'm not gonna highlight everything there, because the majority of these rocks are gonna be in shadow. See, I'm being super loose. I'm not trying to say, okay, here's a rock, and here's a rock. It's just a little, just kinda of drag it in one direction or the other. And if you put a highlight and you're like, oh, I don't think there'd be a highlight there, paint it over with your dark color. You might have just a faint highlight right there on this little piece. All right, now we can take those brighter. I'm just gonna pick up some white and we're gonna really pop the ones that are taking the most direct light. So I feel like right here, just pull that from the edge. I'm not going as far over. Right along the top edge there. Same thing down here. And I feel like it's gonna be darker up under here, a little bit brighter right here. So I'll take it down a little farther in the back here. Let's get a nice bright highlight right here. I'm just gonna kinda of touch. And if it doesn't stick in one place, that's okay. So 
See, I think the highlight on that corner got too bright. So I'm just gonna go back with a slightly darker color. There we go, much better. Let's do a little bit of that on our rocks. And remembering again that the farther back we go, the less of this bright white highlight we're gonna have. So really it's gonna be these guys up in the front, nice bright little points. And now the white's starting to wear off of my brush, but I'm gonna keep going and just get that little bit of a pale highlight on there. And we can add a few shadows back in if we need to. And I want to, because I really like having a nice dark shadow right here under this part. It's gonna make it look like this piece is jutting out. So I'm gonna take this dark color that's pretty much this color here, right underneath it, and then lightly dry brush it down a bit. Be all across that top edge. Fill that in, that got taken too far back. So I'm just gonna darken that again there. And then remember when I said that we might have a little bit of a reflected light from the water on the back. So this color is right about here, just a little lighter than this. And it's pretty dry and I'm just gonna use super light pressure and just barely dust some of it in. It's not really gonna be enough to see, but I think that the slight color difference is gonna be enough to say that there's a little reflection there. Particularly right here at this corner. All right, what I'm gonna do now is just pop some of the highlights in the water, maybe a little on the mountain. I might hit the rocks just a tiny bit, and then I'm gonna let this dry and just kind of take a mental break. Sometimes when I do a lot of layers in a painting, particularly one of this size, I have to take mental breaks. Otherwise, I start doing everything the same way, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna put you into time lapse. I'm gonna be doing the exact same things. Like I said, I'm just adding some spots that are a little bit brighter. Okay, we're back and I have already traced Nessie on here and I didn't make you watch me do that because we've done it before. If you're not sure how, you can click the information icon up here for a couple of videos where we do that. Basically what I did was I took my element, which you can download from my website and there's a link in the video description below. I covered the back of it with chalk because the charcoal affects my paint colors too much. So I just coated this in some chalk and taped it on here, made sure that it was positioned the way that I wanted it to, and then just took a pen and traced the outline, and that's all there is to it. The tracing is very, very easy. She's very simple to draw, but the reason I decided to trace her today was because sometimes I have to make a few adjustments, and I just didn't want to make you suffer through watching that. So when I draw her, I usually start with her head, and I'll just kind of make like a little line that indicates the size and direction that her head is facing. And then I'll make a line for the body, kind of the same way. It comes down pretty much from the line at the head. So they're pretty much in line. And then I just kind of start going around, make, making sure to give her a nice kind of swooping motion. 
Now notice on her fins, the way we're gonna get her body to seem like it's turned and her head is turned is by bringing these two fins into the body. And these two fins, you can't see where they attach to the body. So that's gonna say this is kind of her belly. And what we're seeing back here is her back. And then her head comes up and it turns this way and will indicate that movement by the way we place the shadows. Now we can get started on doing her highlights and shadows. And so really that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not going to try and cover all of this color that's already there because I feel like that sets the stage for the shadows and highlights already on her. So I'm gonna go to my half inch angle brush, but if you're not comfortable getting into little areas like this with a brush this size, use a smaller brush, that's perfectly fine. I did wet it in my jar a little bit and then I wiped it on a paper towel. Now, a lot of this is gonna be dry brushed. So let's start with her shadows. And as we place her shadows, since she's coming up higher and is gonna be in more light up here, the shadows are gonna be lighter than they are down here, just like the background is. So this could be a little bit tricky. If you find that you're having a hard time with this, just do her shadows and highlights the way that you feel like they should be. And then afterwards, if you're using matte medium or even gloss medium, you can lightly glaze some of the dark color over her at the bottom and let that get lighter at the top. And that will kind of give you the same effect. So I'm gonna start with a color pretty similar to this color. So, you know, the darkest color in our sky and this color in here. So a bit of that and just a bit of white. Notice I'm not using a lot of paint. It's pretty dry. See, there's not a ton coming off. That's a little lighter than I want though. And maybe I'll just pull in a tiny point of matte medium. So I'm gonna decide where her shadows are and they're gonna be everything that's facing away from the surface of the water because here the surface of the water is kind of the light source on her. So I'm gonna come down here and kind of carve around that chalk shape. You know what, let's go a little darker there. Let's take her shadows down at the bottom, just a bit darker so that we can see them better. And she's really gonna blend in down here at the bottom especially. So see, I kind of cut that line and then just lightly pull it up a bit. So I'll show you on the back of my plate because I know that's super hard to see. So around the bottom of her tail, it kind of went like that. And then grab that line and kind of dry brush pulled it up like that. That's pretty much how I'm doing the shadow here. A little bit of matte medium helps out. So again, kind of pull that line and drag it up just on the bottom. I'm leaving the top the way it is. I'm not worried about the chalk. The chalk will clean off easily. And we'll take a little bit of that. Let's get just a little extra paint, especially on her tail here. I want her tail to, I don't want it to totally fade in. So I'm using the point of my brush, dragging it, through that kind of little spine area on her tail and dashing a hint of the dark in there. Not trying to cover all of that background color. Once we start doing the highlight color, I think you'll be able to see this a little bit more. Roughly the same color. Let's continue up this way and pull that in. That ended up a little lighter. But as we go up, our shadow is gonna get lighter. And when we start on our highlights, as we come down, the highlights are gonna get darker. And in some areas, you may notice that the shadow area, the shadow color in one area is pretty close to the highlight color in another area. So here we're gonna start getting into some highlight areas. I feel like this spot on her back would be taking a little bit of light. 
So I'm not going to take this dark color up that edge. But I will start taking it up into her belly here. So just kind of dry brushing and dashing. Notice my color is a little different. It's a little bit lighter and that's okay. Now this area is pointing down, so I'm going to take that dark color there along that edge and pull it up into her body. Use a little extra matte medium. There we go. Now I think because we're moving up into the lighter area, you can see these shadows a bit better. Take your time here. Don't get impatient and, you know, feel like if you don't get the shadow right the first time that you're finished. And take your time and, and build them. So I'm using my brush flat, but it's still pretty dry. So I'm not laying down a ton of paint and I'm kind of dashing in different directions, which gives her skin a little bit of texture. You know, she might not have perfectly smooth skin. She's a big old sea monster. Well, we shouldn't call her a monster because she's nice. Nessie's a nice gal. Start dashing that up a bit. Kind of avoiding this area for now. Let's get a little bit lighter as we move up. Not much, because now we're starting to get into an area that might be taking a little bit of light. Right here on her neck, I feel like would, it's kind of a neutral area. It's not necessarily a highlight, but it's not a deep shadow. And then we'll just kind of bridge the gap between those two colors. See light pressure. So let's see, what is this similar to that we've done in the past? I can't think of anything specifically, but we did very similar things all throughout September. So if you worked on highlighting and layers in September with me, then you've got the skills here to do this. And now our shadow kind of changes sides, but it's a pretty faint shadow. It's not gonna be dark because we're getting up toward the surface. So right here, we're gonna have a bit of shadow. This color is just slightly darker than that background color. Again, I'm running it along the edge and then I just kind of dust it in. See how dark that color looks right here? But see how light it looks down here. So, you know, color is relative. What's a shadow color in one area is gonna be a highlight color in another area. Just depends on what's around it. I'm just kind of bringing that under her neck here. Back down a bit. Maybe we'll put that color, just kind of start right there on her back and dust it in so that we don't have this weird line. We've kind of got a weird line right there between the, the shadow area. Let's work on her fins a little bit. So this fin is gonna be catching some light. We'll just get that started even though that's pretty dark. We're gonna add some more to it. And let's go darker underneath it. Pull it in. And on this one, I'm gonna use that color I used for the shadow color. I'm gonna use that for the highlight color here. That's the same color that I just used right there. 
And now I can go a little darker for the shadow color under here. Let's keep that same shadow color. This fin is gonna be almost completely dark. Pretty darn dark right there. I might have just a tiny spot that's ever so slightly lighter right here in the front of it. Let's pull a bit of her body would be blocking light here. So I'm going to take that dark color and kind of pull it down. So really the highlight only exists just right at this edge here. This fin I'm going to do just as dark on the bottom and where it's coming from her body, pull that out a bit. And then we'll add just a little bit more of a highlight color to this edge than we did there. Just a little bit more. That might be just a little too light. No, oh, I think it's okay for now. Dust it in. See how we're letting the texture of the canvas kind of help us get that gradient between the colors, but also add some texture to our skin. Picking up a color that's kind of in between those two, just to dust over where they meet. So it's not such a hard transition. And same here, we just had a little bit too hard of a transition there. So this is probably one of the most one of the most advanced shading and highlight jobs that we've done. So if you feel like you're struggling with it, don't worry about it. It's something that, you know, it takes a lot of work and it can take practice. I got a color roughly this color because her fin is going to be casting a shadow. Well, that's a little darker than I want. There we go. So from her fin down into her body. And when we were going to make these shadows look even darker is by adding highlights. So I know right now she's kind of flat looking but she doesn't have any highlights. All we've done is shadows. I wanna kick that shadow in just a little deeper, a little bit darker. And maybe take a bit of that into her belly here as well. Let's get some of that shadow going under this flipper. And again, that shadow is going to be darker than this one. Don't worry about hard lines in it just yet because we haven't added our highlight and the highlight is really going to help kind of pull those all together. That might have been just a little too much highlight to start with, but that's okay. Just softening that edge there. Yeah, she needs some darker highlights or darker shadows, especially under here. You know, if you're afraid to go too dark all at once, then don't. Go lighter and then go darker, darker and darker and darker 
until you're satisfied. Just like when we start the highlights, if you're afraid to go too light right off the bat, then start darker. You can always intensify either of them. See, I'm kind of, you see how my hand is almost making like a circular motion, but it's only touching kind of in a crescent shape. And that's how I'm getting kind of that smooth, a smooth blend with no brush stroke lines. Nice and dark here. Pull that up a bit. And seriously, it's just like everything else we do highlights on you guys. If you're not satisfied with the way your highlights and shadows are going, and you feel like you're just starting to get a muddy mess, then let it dry and paint over it. Do it again. So that is way too dark for me right there, but I'm gonna keep going. And the reason for that is, and I've told you this before, sometimes I feel like if I do something and I'm like, oh, nope, I don't like that, and I stop and you know adjust my color and go back to it, I'm gonna have one little spot that looks different from everything else. But I know that I can take care of that very easily in a minute, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with that and then take care of it at a later time. So I'm still using that color that I feel like is too dark. I'm gonna pull it up just a bit into this part of her neck that's facing us. Get rid of that line. And just light pressure, just dusting it. Just a hint of it in there. And as it comes around to this side, it comes over to the edge here. I feel like that's pretty good to start with. All right, I cleaned off my brush because I had way too much dark on it. And I'm just gonna get a bit, we're gonna start working on highlights. So I just got a little bit, I'm gonna mix quite a bit of white into it, get a nice light color. Wipe quite a bit of that off. And I'm gonna start by just kind of dusting here on the highlight side of her head. Just pulling that down. Down the back of her neck. And again, kind of pull it in. Down the edge, pull it in. This side I feel like starts to get a little darker. So I just pulled a little bit more of that blue in there. Yeah, that's a little light. There we go, that's better. And see, I can pull it right over top of that dark color that I felt like was too dark there. And so it still exists. I didn't cover it completely, but it helps create kind of that mid-tone color that I was looking for. right in here where I felt like that was too dark. But again, that dark color is still gonna exist there. It just won't be too dark anymore. Sometimes when I paint like this in videos for you guys, I feel bad because I'm like, Oh, I should be able to just plop this on there in one go so that they don't get frustrated or, you know, feel like they're watching me try and figure out how to do something. But then other times I'm like, but that's the process, you know, is experimenting and then refining and changing and coming back. 
And I feel like you guys are probably gonna have to do a lot of that too. So I guess it doesn't make me feel so bad making you watch me change my colors. I have a pretty bright color here. See how bright that is? This part of her back, kind of coming up a little bit into that side of her neck, is gonna start being our super highlighted, our bright, bright areas. Again, just kind of pull it in. Super light pressure so that we don't have a hard line where it stops. And see now, because we're starting to get some highlight, the shadows are starting to look darker and richer. And she's starting to pop off of the background a bit more. Let's take that same color this way. Just pulling it in, breaking up any lines. And dust it into that little bit of the shadow that's being thrown by our flipper. Let's bring a hint of this down right there. Let's get that same color and start working on the brightest highlights. Well, not the brightest yet, just our next layer of highlights through here. Lay it on the edge and super light pressure, not a lot of paint, fairly dry brush. And just pull that in. This one, I don't wanna take that light color there. That's gonna be way too light. So I'm gonna darken that a bit. See, it's quite a bit darker than that color, but when I put it here, it's gonna be about perfect. And if her edges are a little fuzzy because you're dry brushing, I think that that's okay. That's gonna say that she's underwater. You know, I think if she's too crisp and too solidly one color, you know, if all the highlights are the same color, all the low lights are the same color, I feel like she's not gonna look like she's under the water. I feel like she's gonna look on top of it. And I want her to look like she's under the water. And even just a hint darker still. For this little bit of highlight right back here. Okay, I'm starting to be really happy with how she looks. I'm gonna take the faintest bit. There's almost no paint on this brush. Just taking the faintest bit on the very edge of that flipper. I feel like that's really all the highlight I need there. We'll go a tiny hint lighter. And pop it on this one. See, I didn't go all the way up. Her body would be blocking a little bit of it, the brightest light. Oh, I almost forgot her tail. We need some highlights on her tail. So this is that dark color, roughly that color, which might be too bright this low. So at the very top edge of her tail, starting about there, And then very, very faintly, just pull that in, mostly just getting rid of the hard brush stroke line. Same color. Let's take that spine of her tail up because it would have a little highlight on it. 
and start highlighting our tail a little bit, the little thin part. up a slightly bit of a darker color so that that dark and light color could exist there together without looking too different from each other actually yeah I realize we did we did very similar technique with the shadows and highlights in the paint bucket video that we did in September so if you did that one with me the only real difference here is you know the the direction of our brush strokes but the way that we lace colors together is what helps create the dimension. Let's see, this color is a little bit lighter. Let's go just a bit lighter here. I'm not pulling it in quite as far yet. I might get crazy and pull it in pretty far. Yeah, I think I am. But because it's so thin, all of those colors under it still show through. Pull it up her neck just a bit. And on this side. And even lighter, because we're moving up her neck, which is taking on quite a bit of light. Gently pull it down into that last color. And up into her head. I might leave her head and come back and do that with a smaller brush later. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. There's nothing to be afraid of. You know, if your color is too light, you can absolutely fix it. There's no reason to, you know, put this color somewhere and then go, uh oh, well, I messed it all up. Because you can't. Just gently pull that color through there. Let it overlap that shadow ever so slightly. Let's really start getting this fin to pop. Flipper, whatever it is, it's not a fin. darker for the next one. I don't think that's actually light enough. I think I'm going to pull just a little bit more of that light color in. We'll just put it right at the very top. I guess I just really want you guys to be thinking beyond, you know, a single layer. Just like in September, we kept saying, you know, just tell yourself this isn't my last layer. Because the, the more permission I feel like that you give yourself to do layer after layer, the easier it is to get the look that you want. But if you pressure yourself into 
nailing it in the very first layer, I think you're gonna have a really hard time and you're gonna get really frustrated. See, that's a little lighter than I want. No big deal. Much better. So that's what I'm really gonna do. I might put you into time lapse for a minute. I'm just gonna go through and kind of punch the shadows and highlights in the exact same way as I have been, remembering that my shadows are darker the farther down we go and my highlights get brighter the farther up we go. Actually, you know what, I lied. I'm not gonna put you in time lapse just yet. I do wanna show you something because I know it's hard to tell kind of how much paint I'm depositing and that's really gonna be the key here. So let me show you. So my brush is pretty dry. It, there's not a lot of moisture in here and not a lot of paint either. Now, when I'm going over spots like I did right here, so you can still see a little bit of brightness from that spot that was too bright under there because I'm laying down my paint about like that. See how light of pressure I'm using? I'm not doing that and, you know, laying down tons of paint. I'm just kind of doing like that. And because the paint that it's laying down is transparent, it allows those layers underneath to still shine through and do their job. See when I take it over that, see the difference between where that dark color wasn't and where that dark color is? And it helps pull it all together. So don't come in, you know, and grab, you know, a blob of paint like that and think you're gonna do that because you're really just gonna start covering things up and then you're gonna do that to try and get rid of that blob. And before you know it, it's all blended together. So very little paint, kind of dry. My brush is kind of sticking. And that's about what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna put you into a little bit of time lapse. All right, with the, with the basic, I know that's the basic shadows and highlights. With the basic shadows and highlights, I think I'm pretty happy right now. I'm gonna go to my number six filbert, and this is what we're gonna use to pop some highlights that are maybe from the ripples of the water coming down onto her. And because she's the closest to the water, her face, her face is really gonna be the only part that has much pure white on it. There might be a little bit and some little spots throughout her back hair, her neck, maybe just a tiny bit here, but for the most part, it's just gonna be up in this general area. So I'm gonna get a bit of white. And my brush is really just wet right now with water, maybe a little too much. It's a little bit of white. And I'm gonna come in here right to the edge 
super light pressure. See that? And I'm kind of zigzagging, just like we did on the surface of the water. And that's going to help kind of create those little ripple reflections. And see, it helps you cover up little bits that maybe were too dark or too something else. Just be very gentle with this, very delicate. And we'll pull a little bit on her back here. Maybe a little bit more than we did on that flipper. You just kind of zigzag it. Bring it up. Just a little point of it right there on the edge. See tiny hints of it even here where we start to get down into the darker area. But very light pressure still. Let's only worry about the parts that are gonna be pretty close to white. I do wanna add a little bit of that through these flippers, but I don't want it quite that white, so I'm gonna skip those for now because I just don't wanna to have to clean off my brush. Because once I get the dark on there, I'll have to clean it off to continue in the lighter areas. So just very super light pressure, almost not touching the canvas at all. I'm just gonna start getting a hint of it right here. Because it's so thin, it doesn't look pure white, even though that's all I picked up. We'll just let it taper off until you can't really see it anymore there. We'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and fix up her head. She needs some personality in there. So just kind of around the, the edge, the shape of her head. Pull that in. She's gonna need an eye, so I'm just gonna kind of cut a shape like that. And we'll come back to that later. And let's get a bit of that down the back of her neck. And I am just ever so slightly doing the little scrubbing motion. Just kind of dashing it, really. through here. And that might be a bit too much, that's okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and work on her face. And then we can do the shadow, the darker highlights on everything else. So a little bit of this blue mixed in there, right in here where her eye is gonna be. I'm just gonna come in and kind of darken that. And notice that's substantially darker than our shadow color there, right here. So that's gonna make her eye stand out. So I have a crisp line on the bottom and then it just kind of fades out at the top there. And we'll come back to that. And I'm just gonna put a little dot in there somewhere. Maybe she has a nostril or something. Now let's start working on our brightest points on the darker areas. So mixing into some white, get a nice bright color that is still obviously blue, but substantially lighter than what we have going on here. Let's just test that out. Now I think we need to go a little lighter. Let's try that. Oh, much better.
see in comparison to the color we're putting it on, this looks pretty light, almost looks white. But if I bring it up into here, you'd see a difference. You'd see a noticeable difference. I'm not gonna take it all the way to the tip of that flipper. I don't think, maybe. Maybe I'll come back and do that later. Get some right in here. And right there, just on that little spot on her back. Maybe this color that was just a little darker, right on the edge of this flipper in just a tiny spot. See, not much of it. And I don't think I'm gonna do any here, but I am gonna do some on her tail. Let's see, this color might be too light. Let's see. Uh, I think that's a little light. There we go, I like that. Just very soft, very faint little squiggles. Where you can, where it's too narrow to do that, don't worry about it. I'm just slightly dusting it in right here. I don't want a lot of detail. That's where it starts going back into the shadow. Okay, let's take that same color up over the, the tip of her tail a bit. And we'll do a bit of that squiggling. I think that's a little bit much on her tail. We'll just kick it back a little bit with some darker color. Actually, I don't like the squiggles on here at all. I feel like her tail is so far down that it might be catching some light, but it might not have those little light squiggles. So what I'm actually gonna do is just kind of generally insinuate some highlights rather than doing the little light squiggles. I'm just gonna kind of dust it in a bit. There, I like that much better. I just wanna pop like right here. Kind of draw some attention. that much brighter color, just a very couple spots, not much of it. Don't get crazy with that bright color that far down. You just want enough so that the eye is drawn there, so that you notice it. Let's get super dark right here in the crease. One way to really call attention to something in a painting is with contrast. When you have quite a bit of super dark next to super light, that's gonna catch attention. That's probably a little too much attention. No big deal. Perfect. Okay, I feel like I might be about done with her tail. Let's finish up her face. I got a clean brush, just pure white. And we're gonna come right in here, keep that bright straight line under her eye and then dust it out at the bottom. Let's make sure we've got some nice pure white pops 
in her face because she's really close to the surface of the water. I'm going to dust over that eye just a little bit because I don't want it to be quite that big. And I think Nessie probably has little eyes. She lives in a very dark environment. Not a lot of reason for some big, huge eyes. And then, that's really it for her face. I think I'm just going to put you in a time lapse again for a minute while I pop a couple more highlights. And then we just have one more thing to do and we're done. All right, I'm gonna use my number two round brush and we're gonna do the last thing. Now there's always boats on Loch Ness when you look at pictures of them. So I'm gonna do a very small boat. Now you wanna be aware of where you're placing the boat. Nessie's coming up like that and she's looking, she looks like she's looking at something. She's interested in something. So you don't wanna put the boat right here because the, the boat and Nessie will seem disconnected. Like why are they both in the image? You don't really want to put it like clear back here because they're a little less disconnected than if it's over here, but I still feel like they're disconnected. So what I'm going to do is look at where she's looking and that's about where I'm going to put my boat. So I'm going to do a very simple boat. They have a lot of these little boats that kind of look like yachts. What I think of when I think of a yacht anyway, I have no idea anything about boats. I could be way off. And we'll come straight across. My paint is really starting to dry out. So all of you who are amazed at how long I can keep my paint wet for, I don't. It dries out just like yours does. And then I'll pull this part back a little bit. Make sure they end roughly in the same spot. We'll give it a little cabin. And then just kind of fill that in. Maybe it needs like a little railing. This part's going to take some dexterity. Put a little mast. The little boom for the, what is that? The sail. I told you, I don't know anything about boats. So if this doesn't look like an actual boat, please don't yell at me. I'm kind of going by memory from, you know, some of the boats that I've seen on images. And a little line from there to there. And that's about as much as I'm going to do on the boat. Now it needs a shadow. And remember, we want to keep in line with our moon. Our moon is here. It's shining down that way, so our shadow is going to be in line with it. It's going to move that way. right there at the base. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to my number, uh, what was it, my number six, Filbert, again, for this part. We're just doing a nice dark shadow. 
It's really the same way as we did the highlights on the water in the first place. Remember, let it come out a little bit. The ripples kind of break and scatter the image. Nice and dark right at the base of the boat. There we go. Except then I decided that my boat is too dark. <laughs> Remember when I told you that we won't be using the dark color all on its own in any place? Well, that means the boat too. So I'm just gonna fill it in with a slightly lightened version of that color, more along the lines of that color in the sky. I just felt like, oh, it stood out way too much. And I believe I'm done, so I'm gonna sign it. And this is my last painting of 2017, for you guys anyway. And there's your Loch Ness Monster painting. I hope you enjoyed our last painting of 2017 together, and I wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been with me throughout the year. This has been an awesome year, and I'm super excited to see what we do together in 2018. If you haven't, make sure that you hit that subscribe button because I've got some fun things planned that you don't want to miss. Thank you for painting with me throughout this year, everyone, and I can't wait to see you in 2018.